Okay, looks like we're live. And it looks like we already have 12 people waiting. And we even got Alan in the chat room already. So, hello everybody. So, welcome to Wednesdays with Mr. Tie-Dye. <laughs> uh, anyways, so today we're going to tie, I'm going to tie a tapestry. I have uh, the lines already drawn on here. I'm doing a uh, zigzag DNA on this tapestry. Uh, but before we get to that, I had mentioned that I was going to auction off this tapestry from last week. So any of you guys that were in here last week, uh, I put up the reveal video. <clears throat> but anyway, so this here is just folded in half so I can get it all on the table here. So this is the tapestry. This one measures about 54 inches by 56 inches. It's one of the Sunshine Joy tapestries. So it has these nifty little loops on the corners. To hang the tapestry with so if you want to place a bid you just place the bid in the chat box here and I'll try to keep an eye on where we're at for the total on that and at the end I will go ahead and announce a winner as long as we get more than one bid if I get one bid for five bucks I'm not selling it five bucks but as long as we get some decent bids I will keep on doing the auctions here on these videos so Let's see, we've got 24 people watching now, more people joining in, Rain Dancer, Green, Gwen, Alan, Megan, Carmel, Anna, Andrew, Meg, hello, thank you guys for joining me. So, like I say, what we're going to do today, <clears throat> this was a, another design that came to me in a meditation, so it was just a zigzag DNA on a tapestry, so... Since my work area is so small here, I didn't want to try to draw this on live, but I will explain. Basically, I folded the tapestry in half. So, well, I soaked it in soda ash, spun it out so it's barely damp. And then I folded it in half. So this here is my center line of my tapestry. And then I just drew some extra marks on it here. So this here was a center line here. And then what I did is I drew a six inch channel over here on this side and a six inch channel on this side here and then that way I could center this up and draw all of the rest of my lines on but basically this big line here is the one that I'm going to fold top to bottom and then I'm going to dye that in a DNA fashion. So let's see, we got more people joining in, 32 watching now. So hello hello for everybody, thank you for joining me. Uh, Looks like we even got some members in here, so hello, it's good to see you. Let's see, yeah, we got a couple members in. And I'm hoping the rest of you guys have at least subscribed to my channel. I know there's a bunch of people that watch without subscribing, but when you subscribe, it helps my, my channel. And then one other way of helping my channel, and it doesn't cost you anything, if I know during the live streams it's harder to let the commercial run at the beginning but when you're watching the videos the rest of the time if you let those ads roll before the video and after the video then the Google AdSense they put a little bit of that money into my account so I get paid for that so I appreciate anybody that watches lets those ads roll um, let's see oh and the other thing is I don't oh I don't want that I don't put the ads on during the middle of the video I don't care for those so I don't put them on mine so you guys are lucky on that let's see okay already subscribed I appreciate that let's see okay so I'm gonna go ahead and get started so basically like I say I'm gonna just do a big long accordion fold on this so what I like to do is just kind of line everything up so that I can just kind of fold and just draw the tapestry right towards me so I'm just kind of flopping all of the edges up here to get them out of my way and then I'm just going to accordion fold this line here and then I'm going to fold extra because I'm going to be drying mostly right in this channel here so I'm going to go ahead and fold extra here and then when we tie this up that's where I'm going to put the the whole um, rainbow DNA in here Okay, it looks like we got some bids on the tapestry already. The 
di the dragon scale tapestry. This one here is the one we're auctioning. So we got 35. Oh, we got 50. Okay, so we're at 50 already on that. So thank you guys. And you guys can keep bidding throughout the whole time here. And I will announce the winner at the end. So what I'm going to do now is just accordion fold this. And I just try to keep my pleats about the same height and just kind of try to line this up right on top. Uh, so we got 55. Thank you. So people liking the dragon scale tapestry. That one was the the highest view in the short amount of time. YouTube gives me some numbers and stuff telling me which ones are popular. And the reveal of this video here outranked all the rest of my videos. So that was pretty awesome to see. Uh, okay, we're up to 70. Uh, we're up to 80 now. So it looks like we have some fierce bidding competition going on. I appreciate that. So I'm just going to keep on folding this and you guys can feel free to ask questions. I'll try to keep an eye on the chat here and answer those as we go along. Uh, let's see, how much do you typically sell? They're not, uh, my tapestries, depending on the design, I sell those anywhere from 75 to, well, I guess I've had some of the this size here up at 250, but I did a, a stitch design on that. But typically, my folded designs, they go anywhere from uh, $75 to $100, $120, depending on what kind of a design I put on them. So, okay. So, yeah, we're sitting at 80 for the high bid right now. I appreciate everybody bidding. And like I say, this I'll do the same thing with this tapestry here. This has been kind of a fun thing to do on Wednesdays and oh, I just did something here okay there we go <laughs> so I'm gonna try to keep on doing these on Wednesdays and maybe try to add another day in there if I can so if you guys have any suggestions on days and times that work better for you you can kind of put those either in this chat box or you can put them in the well i gotta keep my tapestry off of my computer because it keeps pushing buttons i don't want that <laughs> so okay oh we're up at 95 on the tapestry now so thank you that's anna and she's a member too so i appreciate the support thank you thank you Okay, so I'm just trying to accordion fold this and then like I say, I'm also trying to keep my pleat straight because this other side here in this channel is where I'm going to die at. So I want to kind of keep this semi flat here as I'm going so that I, cause I'm going to go back and fix all of this later, but I try to at least have it workable for me. So if you guys have any questions, or if you guys just want to chat amongst yourselves, uh, that's always fun too. Looks like we got 37 people in here now. So I take it you guys are liking these Wednesdays uh, hanging out with me while I do tie-dye. Otherwise, I guess you wouldn't be here. So... Uh, we got 95. It looks like Andrew might be out. <laughs> That's okay. Like I say, I'll keep on making new ones. And I can. I even have other tapestries that I can break out and do auctions on. I've been trying to do uh, giveaways on my page. I'm going to do a special 420 giveaway. Um... So when I figure out the details of what I'm giving away, I'll make an announcement out there. I might do a couple of them. It seems like I have a bunch of people over on YouTube, but then there's also people over on Facebook. But not the two places don't always cross over, so I might do a couple giveaways. I might do one here on YouTube and one on uh, Facebook. Okay, so I'm getting this pleated. I'm just about down to the end here, and we can start putting some dye on this thing. So, 
<laughs> okay, Andy. Andrew, that sounds great. Thank you. Then hang out and watch me finish dye or folding dyeing this thing up. Yay, 420. Yeah, I'm here in Oregon, so I like 420 here in Oregon. So who, where do we have people from in here? Where are you guys all signing in and viewing from? And how's this shutdown going for everybody? Okay, Meg, Meg says she'll be back next Wednesday. She's got to go feed the horses. Okay, well, have fun with your horses. Um, I'm going to, like I say, kind of play around with other days and times. Uh, I've had some people say they just can't make it to this one on Wednesday at... I had been doing one third or one fifteen, and I decided to try one thirty, just a little bit later. Okay, so we got North Carolina, Houston, Austin, Cheyenne, Virginia, Arlington, uh, Portland. Yep, just north of me, South Carolina, Chicago, Northern New York, Orlando, Kansas. So we got people from all over, Seattle, uh, Michigan. More Michigan, Oklahoma, Chicago. Yeah, I like this. Do we have anybody from outside the United States watching? I do get a lot of questions from around the world, so I was just curious if anybody's watching from around the world. Let's see, Idaho Falls, Knoxville, or south of Knoxville, Tennessee. Tip City, Ohio is watching. Best way to spend my time, yes. So, okay, so I got that first fold done. So usually what I'll do is go ahead and just wrap a few times just to hold that tight. And now I'm going to go ahead and straighten out some of my pleats here. I'm not going to try to make all the same perfect pleats here. But I just want to kind of straighten some of those out. And like I say, I haven't done one just quite like this before. Uh, this came to me in a meditation, so... I usually try to take some notes while I'm meditating, or sometimes I'll even draw a little picture. And then I can come back later and refer to that. So I was trying to figure out what to do for this video, and I couldn't think of anything. So that's why I pulled out my meditation journal, and there was this video, or this tapestry idea. So let's see. Somebody's asking, what do I use to thicken my dye? Uh, for that, I use sodium alginate. And I do have two videos on here. If you just look up uh, on my channel, Making Thick Dye. Um, the first one will come up is the most recent one. And that, the sodium alginate, I bought it from Amazon. So... Cape Crystal Brands. So there's the sodium alginate. This here's a really fine powder and it blends up nice, but the consistency I get from the other, the sodium alginate from Dharma, I just like it better. And then of course, um, in the second video, that's the sodium alginate from Dharma. And then I also use salt and urea. So when I mix that up, that makes a, a good recipe for either using the thick dye for doing my outlining, but it also makes a nice thick dye that you can use to paint with because the uh, urea in there is a wetting agent. And when you do the painted dyes, they need to stay damp for the dyes to set up. So the urea kind of helps with that. So let's see. Oh, a bunch of questions. How do you feel about people selling shirts with patterns they learned from your, your YouTube page? Uh, I don't have any problem with that at all. The reason that I'm doing these videos is so that people can learn, so people can have success. And when you have success, that naturally leads to selling your t-shirts. So that's what I'm hoping. I've had lots of people that have started a tie-dye business after they learned tie-dye from me. And I've had a few people even go on to start their own YouTube channel uh, just to put up a few videos. Um, so yeah. 
anything you guys learn from me, feel free to make it and sell it or sh share it and teach other people. That's, that's the whole goal is I just want this art to be out there in the open and people being able to have success with it. But I know sometimes when you're starting something new, it's hard to be good right off the bat. And sometimes you don't realize you like something until you've been doing it for a while. But if you can't have success at it, then a lot of people give up on tie-dye too soon. So, anyways, I hope that answers your question. That was a kind of a long one, but I get chatty sometimes. What does your meditation practice generally look like? Um, that... My meditation practice varies just, I mean, throughout the day. I mean, there's sometimes I'll do just a, a quick meditation. Like at 11.11, I like to just put my hand on my heart and close my eyes and just take three or four deep, slow breaths, and you just let them out with a sigh. <sighs> and then I like to say little mantras. So I'll say, you know, I am peace. I am love. I am compassion and I just like to send that energy out to the world and then other times I'll go outside and stand and ground uh, preferably I like to do it barefoot uh, in the winter time that gets a little bit cold but still it's invigorating to go outside barefoot I might wear a hat and a coat but go out there and stand barefoot and then I just visualize myself standing and grounding like I'm a tree so like I have roots coming out of my feet and going down into the earth and then I have a beam of light that comes from the center of the earth up through all of my chakras and up out of the top of my head out to the central sun at the center of our galaxy so then I just feel like I'm connected to the whole universe so and then I also have a uh, Russian style pyramid made from PVC pipes that's about seven feet tall and I like to sit in that and meditate because I feel it kind of just ramps up my energy a little bit. So eventually I think I'm going to start making some videos on my meditation practices and putting them over on my other page. Uh, I have a page on Facebook called Portals of Magic. And I also have a YouTube channel, but I haven't made any videos yet. So that's something coming up. And when I do that, I'll probably link it to this channel so that people can find it easily. So, anyways, thank you, Larry. Um, I don't speak, s I, I think that's Spanish from Eliz uh, Elizabeth Maria. Um, so, I, I usually use Google Translate for answering those questions, so I can't do that live right now. Um, okay, I think I about have my pleats ready here. I'm going to tie this up a little bit more. So a nice having my, my channels on here, my lines that I drew and with this zigzag of course these lines are going back and forth but I can kind of see then when I put on my dies where because I want to kind of keep it inside the channel here. Just my preference. That's just kind of what I had my my vision. So that's one nice reason for putting lines on here is just so you have a guide for where you're going to put your dies or where you're going to stop putting your dies at. So, okay. Received my first set of powders the other day to start tie dye. Watching lots of videos. Okay, glad to hear that, Camarilla. Yes, I love to help people, and I've been doing this for about 20 years, and I think I spent the last 16 years I did a lot of school events and home parties and I think that just kind of set me up perfect to do these videos so when I had several people ask me about making videos I felt called to do it so but at the time I also thought I was only going to do maybe 12 to 15 videos just kind of some of the basics and then be done because even though as you guys might not know it from all of these videos I've done, I am kind of a shy person, so getting on camera and doing these, I didn't think I was going to do that many. But then I had so much fun, and then the feedback from you guys has just been excellent. So that's what's kept me going, making these videos. 
is just having fun with it and being able to help so many people. So, let's see. So, have fun, Carmilla, and welcome to the wonderful world of tie-dye. Although you must be forewarned, this art can be quite addictive. <laughs> uh, thank you, uh, Liz. Thank you, Anna. <laughs> and Megan, yes, grounding is very important, and doing it uh, barefoot is just wonderful. There's a video on YouTube that I watch called Earthing, and he really spoke to the, the science and the medical reasons behind grounding. So if you guys haven't seen that, look up grounding or earthing on YouTube, and there will be several videos on there about grounding and stuff. Okay, so this here is going to be my channel. I'm going to go ahead and draw another line on this other side just so I know where I'm stopping my dies at. And then I'll draw the line on the bottom side after I'm done here. Let's see. Oh, we got somebody from. Brazil in here. Thank you. I have so much fun with this. We were just asking about people from other places around the world, so thank you for letting me know. Hello, hello to Brazil. Okay, Jacqueline, you have a good day. Um, yep, I after this is after I'm done shooting this, then this video will of course just process and go right up. And then when I have the results, I'll do a reveal video for that. So that'll be next week sometime, or maybe later this week, depending on when I get a chance to wash this. And then, of course, next Wednesday, unless something comes up, I will be doing another live video where I will auction this tapestry off. So right now, I'm just kind of working on some of my pleats here. I kind of tied this up and... Now I have my cuticle pusher, and I love these. They have this nice, smooth, flat edge on there, so that I can get in here and kind of poke things around without worrying about tearing the fabric. So that's what I'm doing right now, is just evening some of these pleats out before I start tying the rest up and then putting the dies on. And I can also open things up and pull a crease up if I need to, because sometimes they get buried down in there. summer coming will you show us how to tie-dye a pair of men's shorts yes and I also plan on I have a, another pair of pants that I'll be dying because I've had a lot of people ask about dying pants but I probably have another pair of shorts so I will get in and make those up whether I don't know if I'll do them live or if I'll just make a video and just put it up normal I haven't been getting to those lately the live videos plus just life in general has been keeping me busy but I do hope to start getting more videos back up again in the regular way. But the live videos have been fun too, so as long as I have people interested in those, I will keep on doing them. Okay. Oh, somebody's dog was born on 420. Awesome. That's a good sign. Kansas. Do you have a circled ripple tutorial by chance? I uh, know the the circle or the ripple tutorial is one that I learned from Josh Shep, and I purchased that over on his Etsy page at uh, Push Rainbows. So for the ripple one, I won't be doing a tutorial just out of respect for Josh, who is selling the tutorial, and since I bought it, I'm not going to put it out for free. So you guys can, if you want the Ripple, you can purchase it from Josh. Let's see. Do I use real sinew? No, I use artificial sinew. I mean, I just, I call it sinew, but it's, it's technically the artificial stuff. I buy mine from Dixie Gunworks, and I buy the 70-pound test. The, it's the flat sinew. So that's what I prefer to use. The real sinew I've heard is expensive, 
And as much of it as I use on some of my projects, it, I think it'd just be too expensive to use for something like this. And the artificial sinew works really well. Okay, so we're getting closer. I got one more side to tie up and then I'll get this ready and we'll start dyeing this. So, and I think, I don't think I've seen any more bids. Like I said, I'll do a good check before I announce the winner. But I think we had the high bid come in at 95 by Anna right now. So, just for anybody that's new to joining, I'm auctioning off the diamond, uh, dragon diamond scale tapestry that I folded up in the last video. So, it's folded in half here. So, but anyway, so that's sitting right now, high bid of 95 by Anna. So, and what I'll do for that is just ask that you send me, um, a message with your email address and I can send you a invoice to pay from <clears throat> the shipping for this in the US is seven dollars if you're outside the US whoever wins this then I can figure a shipping cost for you but if you're in the US it's seven dollars and it, that's priority mail okay got that side tied and ready to go Yeah, the sodium alginate from Dharma, it just, I've tried to even mix it with hot water and it still, after a while, it tends to kind of get gummy. So I only use that if I'm just kind of in a hurry because I can mix it up quite quickly. But the stuff from Dharma is the, the sodium alginate that I prefer. So let's see. Oh, and you're welcome, Larry, for the meditation. Yeah, I just, out of respect for other artists. I mean, I, I do put a lot of stuff out there for free, but I can't put other people's stuff out there for free. And the wig wag. Um, I, I've seen what is called the wig wag. I've just called it uh, a, a zigzag DNA. I don't have a tutorial out for that. But that's one that I'll consider making one for. I played with that technique oh, eight or ten years ago. And I've been wanting to play with it more. But I got kind of wrapped up in everything else. And so I will make a note of that. And show a picture of the, the design that I have done in the past. And you guys can decide whether you want to watch that video or not. What do you use when you make a tapestry? Um, if you're talking about the actual fabric, this here is a tapestry blank uh, from Sunshine Joy. Um, but I have also used uh, cotton fabric. If I need it a specific size, I can cut it to the size that I want. Um, if I'm making a really big tapestry, then I'll buy flat sheets. And I usually will buy them from Target when they have them on sale. And the queen size and the full size uh, flat sheets are really nice ones for doing a tapestry on. So is that the uh, answer to your question, William? Okay, we'll be ready to add some dye to this soon here. Okay, great. Yeah, if you just... Uh, do a search for Sunshine Joy, and then and whether they might not be open during the shutdown, I'm not sure. But when you get to their website, you click on the link for tapestries, and there will be one section for blank white tapestries. And then they have several different sizes. Uh, this one here is um, about 50, I think it on, on their website they listed it as the 58 by 58. But after you wash it, it shrinks down to, I think, 54 by 56 inches. So this is one of my common ones. And then I also use the 58 by 90 inches. 
So that's another nice size, but they have several different sizes there at Sunshine Joy. Uh, definitely a zigzag DNA tutorial before. Yes, like I say, I'll I'll pull that out and kind of play with that design a little bit more before I do a video on it but let's see oh yes uh quantum lotus tapestries yes i've i've dyed some of those and those are fantastic and that's uh bo dorsey over on facebook he sews those up uh they are a uh don't quote me on this but what i remember is they're organic cotton and hemp blend and then he also sews the little loops in the corners for hanging. And those die up excellent. I love those. Hey, banana pie, what's going on? We're just doing some tie-dye here. Got a tapestry. I did a zigzag DNA on this. And also it's folded in half, so it'd be kind of a double zigzag. And it for should form some diamond shapes in there. So I'm going to do a rainbow DNA down the middle and then on the sides here I'm going to use a cobalt and black to just darken out the sides here so we have that bright rainbow down the middle. Let's see. Oh yes, somebody wants me to start over so just let me cut these off of here. <laughs> Yes, after I'm all done with this, this video will self-process and then it'll be up for viewing. But what I did is I folded up a DNA, a zigzag DNA design, and I'm getting ready to mark out the middle here. <clears throat> Actually, I think I'm just going to go for it on my die in here. So I'm going to put some gloves on, and then I have my rainbow colors ready to go. <clears throat> bottles here the ones from Amazon they have they're a four ounce bottle and they have these nice little metal tips on them <clears throat> really nice to use especially when you're trying to do more precision work here so and eventually when I get back to working on this video I will add the link to Amazon where I purchased these from Okay, so what we're going to do is just dye in the rainbow. And sometimes I'll draw lines on here, but sometimes it's fun to just go for it. And that's what I'm doing now is just kind of eyeballing how wide I need to make my stripes here. Let's see. Hope you have a nice stock of gloves. Yes, uh, I definitely... I also do school events, so I buy boxes and boxes of these from Costco. So I probably have three or four boxes, which means I probably have a thousand gloves around here. So yes, plenty of gloves. Okay, well, do we have any questions, any topics of discussion? Or I can just ramble on about something. I don't know what, but just don't ask me to sing. Let's see. 
Please add link to the Ripple tutorial. Yeah, when I'm done with this here, I will add that into the the video description. Once this video processes, I'll add a link to the Ripple design in there, or the Ripple tutorial, where you guys can find that. Uh, how do you come up with new designs? Just experiment. <clears throat> yes, uh, sometimes I like to just sit down and just kind of play with stuff. Um, so I'll just start folding something up randomly and dye it and see what I get. And that was how I came up with the uh, Quantum Scrunch. I was just kind of fooling around one day, folding and just try it different ways. Um, there's other times like this design here that I'm doing is one that came to me kind of in a vision during a meditation. Um, and there's other times where I'll just, I'll see something like an advertisement and sometimes even just a flash of color or a line or something will give me an idea of something to try. And by the time I sit down working on it, then my brain is kind of filled in even more of the details. So yeah, I think the, the new ideas and stuff mostly just kind of come to me and some of them is found through experimentation. Oh, thank you, Steve. We got another. We got a super chat, so I appreciate that. Oh, you're uh, one of my members. That's what it was. I guess I get confused. I thought that was a super chat, but that's a member chat. So, hello, Steve. Thank you for joining us. Let's see. Any good ways to come up with interesting designs? Um, another way that you can kind of play with that, <clears throat> what I'll do is I'll take a, a napkin or something, and I'll fold it up, and then you can kind of cut like you do those uh, old-fashioned snowflakes. So you can kind of cut shapes out and open that up and get a, a little quick picture of it. Or if you're doing a paper towel, you can. I've even folded stuff up and then added just a little bit of dye to it and opened it up to see what I get. So there's lots of ways of kind of playing with experiments, you know, for ideas before you actually get to it uh, working on a tapestry. Let's see. How long have you been doing this? I've been doing tie-dye for 20 years now. And it was something that I had a store at the time. We were just adding new things to the store. We were selling books and candles and gifts. We wanted some handmade gifts to sell out of the store. And my partner at the time, she had done tie-dye, and she offered that up as an idea. So we bought ourselves a little kit and broke out some t-shirts and tried it. And I just kind of fell in love with tie-dye. And I haven't stopped doing it since then. So that was how I got started in tie-dye. was through having my store. Can you share some info about the kinds of dyes you're using and how much mixture is in each bottle? Uh, I'm using fiber reactive Procyon dyes. I buy mine mostly from Dharma, but I've also purchased them from uh, Custom Colors in North Carolina, and I've purchased from Grateful Dyes in Colorado. The main thing is the Procyon dyes. Those are the really good ones. And the Procyon dyes need soda ash to set the, the dyes up. So that's why I always soak my tapestry or my t-shirt in soda ash before I do that. And I do have a, a video on mixing dyes. So you can just look up mixing dyes on my channel or you can go to my playlist. If you find the beginner playlist, then there's a video in there about mixing the dyes where I have all the amounts that I use in there. So and actually that, that shows the base amounts and then I usually add a little bit of extra just because. Okay, so back to the tapestry here. I, I put my colors on the, the other side and now when I'm flipping it over, when you're doing a DNA, what you wanna do is rotate your bottles one direction or the other. So what I'm gonna do is move all of my bottles down 
and move purple down to the front here. So now on this side here, I started with the fuchsia, and now I'm going to start with the purple on this one here. So all of my colors are going to be offset by one space on here. So that's how you get that DNA look. It's just by offsetting your dyes by one space. The main thing is if you're counting your spaces out, if you're doing multiple colors, or I mean multiple lines of the same color in there, then sometimes dyeing all of those at the same time saves you some time, but you want to make sure you don't lose track of your spaces. I've done that before and then I didn't have enough room. And of course you can just work it out and leave one color out and make it work, which is what I did, but that's just something to be aware of is that you can lose. And this way here, I'm going to dime all right in a straight row here, so I won't lose any spaces. Let's see. My biggest problem now is keeping my pleats even and stopping the fabric from bunching up. Um, the main thing I do for the folding is doing them damp. If if you fold dry, then that makes it harder. Um, and then sometimes it's a matter of working on a small space. So when I folded this initially up, I was only working in this amount of space here. And then I tied that and then I came over here and I straightened things out. And then I kind of wrapped up. So I just kind of worked a little bit and worked my way over. And then even after I tied it, then I go back with my cuticle pusher and just kind of straighten things out. So it's just a matter of just kind of working with it. As far as keeping your pleats straight, it's a matter of when you fold uh, the line up and down. Let's see if I can get something to sh show you on here. Okay, so just on the, the basic here, when you're folding your line up, the main thing is trying to line this line up so that it comes straight down on this other side here. If you fold it and it comes off at an angle, then each time you fold it, it's just going to keep going over at an angle. So just trying to make sure that you fold straight up and straight down. So I just, as I'm lining my thing up, I try to have the tapestry lined up so it's coming straight at me. And then when I pick up that die, I'm trying to line this line up straight on this line here. And then fold that straight back down so that your line is doing the same thing on the underside. And if you do have your line drawn on there with a washable marker, then you can see your line just staying on top right here. If it's going off to the side, then you can kind of correct it just by kind of pulling things back over. So yeah, it just it also takes practice. And the more you do it, the easier it's going to be for you. Got my cursor blocked here. Okay. Did I mix this green? Yeah, this green here is uh, my own mix here of bright green. And what I do is I start with about three quarters of a bottle. So probably just a little bit more if I was using this little yellow one here. Uh, I do three quarters of it in yellow and then I top it off with turquoise and that gives me this really limey green. But if I'm just mixing my dyes, then that's what I'll do is I'll use three parts of uh, lemon for however much dye I'm putting in. I mix that much powder in and then just a little bit of the turquoise and you can adjust it. The more yellow that you use, the brighter, limeier this green is going to be. And the more turquoise you use, then the darker the green is going to be. So you can adjust the brightness just by adding those two colors. So yeah, that's a, a fun one. I used to buy the bright green, but I found that I liked the color I got from mixing my own. So I started doing that. Make it look so easy when you do your folds. I cannot get them straight. Uh, well, that's my 20 years of practice showing there. Uh, I can't stress that enough. Practice is a, a big thing in tie-dye. Um, there might be one or two people that pick this up and don't have to practice it because they just are doing it perfect. I spend a lot of time practicing. So that's the, the best thing I can recommend is just continuing to do it.
question is to color saturation how do you eliminate the white showing up um, one of the things that helps on minimizing the white is making sure that your tapestry that you're dyeing is just barely damp if if there's too much soda ash in there then in this space my i don't have this too thick here but sometimes if you have a thicker space you know like if you're doing a hoodie uh and you put your dyes on they're only going to penetrate so far and then you flip it over and you put the dyes on the other side and they penetrate so far and what you've then done is squeeze that liquid from the soda ash right there in the middle between those two which then gives you a big white gap in there um so making sure that your tapestry or t-shirt or whatever is just barely damp is going to help allow the dye to soak in further. And then the other thing is a matter of just opening your creases up and looking for it. So when I get all done with this here, I'll do that. But you can even start stop right here and just pry this open. And as I look down in my creases here, I can't see any white down in there. Um, another way that you can do that is just reach underneath with your fingers and just kind of push up on the, the pleats like that and I can see that I have my fuchsia my orange mixing right there. So I know that I have enough dye on this one here. But that's another thing, it, it just takes practice and it does take going back and checking for things like that. Sometimes you can see little tiny white fibers that after you put your dye on it, it sits for a couple minutes, you'll see the little white fibers poke up on your t-shirt that's mostly where it shows up at and when those show up it means that the dye that you just put on has soaked down further in there and this top part now is dry so those fibers are sticking up so if you see those fibers sticking up it usually means that you need a little bit more dye and you can go ahead and open those up just so you can look down inside and see how much but those are a couple of the the ideas that will help you work with your saturation and then just the more that you do it, you kind of get a feel for how the, the dye soaks in as to whether you need to add more or not. So I hope that answered your question. Let's see. I think I missed some of your questions. Yeah, I use the, the napkin quite often. Like I say, there's times where I want to test something out. So I can kind of do a little fold however I'm doing it. And then, like I say, I can either use scissors to cut into the napkin just to kind of see what, an, what something looks like. Or I can actually add dye to that. But just doing something like that gives me an idea of what a design design is going to look like before I've actually folded it. So that's one way to kind of experiment and play with figuring out new designs. So I use these napkins quite often. I also use them if I'm mixing dyes. So I will, if I'm trying to mix a color, like here I wanted kind of a, a darker orange, so I was adding bronze to it. So this is my regular orange, and then I just add a little bit more, and I put a test drop on here until I got it as dark as I wanted. So, yeah, it's good to have these white napkins around for all kinds of uses in tie-dye. Big hug directly from Brazil. Thank you, Diego. Diego? Diego? I'm sorry if I'm mess <laughs> messing up your name. I can't talk right now. Uh, but, yes, thank you. Uh, big hugs out to everybody here. Thank you so much. Do we have to thicken the dye? No, you do not have to thicken the dye. None of these dyes that I'm using right now are thickened. Um, the thickened dye that I use quite most often is when I'm outlining something, like with one of my stitch designs. And so my black dye is uh, thickened, but the black dye that I'll be putting on here isn't because the thickened dye doesn't soak in as far. So that, that's also a problem. If you thicken your dyes too much, you can end up with more white spaces because you put the dyes on and they don't, they don't penetrate all the way down in. So let's see. Do you have, uh, what are your favorite colors of dyes? Uh, the, as far as for my rainbow, I like the plum. I have 
uh, as far as my primary colors, I got the fuchsia, the lemon yellow, and turquoise. Those, I think, are optimum for when you're doing tie-dyes, having the, the primary colors. And then I fill it in with the plum. I have deep orange, and then I use uh, an emerald green in my rainbow a lot. So those are favorites. And then I add in, I got sapphire blue and cerulean blue. As far as my blacks, uh, I do a mix of blacks. But if I was buying just one, I would probably go with raven black from Dharma. Or let's see, the black from Custom Colors is dark black. So that's another black that I like. But I mix three different blacks to get my black mix. So I have Raven Black, New Black, and Better Black all in my black bottle here. Okay, we're going to get back to dyeing here. I'll try to keep answering questions here. Sometimes I get behind on the questions and I have to roll back on them. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, that's that's the best thing for tie-dye, just practice. Just keep on doing it, and you'll keep on seeing improvements. If you don't use up all of the liquid dyes you made, how long does it keep? Um, I have mine around for two to three weeks. I usually, when I mix my dyes up, I'll write the date right on the bottle, so I know how long that they've been around. Uh, green is one of the ones if at the two to three week mark if I'm going to be doing a custom order and I have my dyes are that old then I will go ahead and add another scoop of dye and blend it again. If you have a spare fridge to store your dyes in then they're going to last even longer but I don't have a spare fridge for that. And these are just kept at room temperature and typically in my house, room temperature is anywhere from 65 to 70 degrees. So, and they, like I say, they'll last two, three weeks, still give me great colors from there. Hi, Shannon. Hey, Autumn. And hi, Ivana. Thank you for joining me. Oh, that's great to hear. Thank you. I love doing these, and I love helping and inspiring people. Do your gloves ever rip while you hand wash the shirts? Uh, yeah, I, I should wear gloves while I'm doing my rinse out, but too many times I'll have them rip or I'll get water in them, so I tend to take my gloves off when I'm doing the rinse out. But... I've been doing this for many years and I know I don't have any kind of allergies to the soda ash or to the dyes. So, but I do, I recommend people wear their gloves for the whole process. Uh, because every now and then I still see people post on Facebook that they've had a rash or something show up on their hands and allergies to the soda ash can develop. So it's just recommended to wear the gloves whenever possible. I try to wear them also, but I don't always wear them. I appreciate your videos and instruction. Look forward to the next one. Awesome. You probably have to watch all of your videos. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I love what I do, and I'm going to keep on putting these out. As long as there's interest in these videos, I'm going to continue to put them out there. And so far, there seems to be a, a lot of interest in what I'm doing here. Although I'm getting distracted here and I need to keep dying. Okay, we probably watched all of your videos. Yeah, well, I don't know. There's an awful lot of them. I think I, I haven't counted recently, but there's over 200 of videos on my channel, so... But if you've watched them all, hey, that's wonderful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. So I didn't quite get my spacing right. I think I dyed the lines on the other side a little bit thicker. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this off with purple. Well, no, I think I'll 
I'm going to skip that because I got purple on the bottom side. So I'm just making an adjustment here because I, I dyed my lines, I think, a little bit thicker on this side than I did on this side. I got carried away talking and <laughs> wasn't paying attention to what I was doing. So anyway, since I already have purple on this side here, I want to keep up the DNA look. So I skipped putting purple here and I just went right to fuchsia just so that that still has that same DNA look to it. Now what I'm going to do is just add just a one more light coat of all of these colors here. Do you like the ice dye method? Yes, uh, the last two videos I did were both ice dyes. And I'm going to probably be doing more playing with the ice dye method because you can get some fantastic colors and patterns that show up just because of the technique of the, the ice separating your colors out from the powders. But this week I decided I needed to do a liquid dye just because this one here, I seen it as a, a DNA in the center. And the DNA, you need to dye it differently on the top and the bottom. So, but yes, I do like the ice dye method. Uh, are you using needle tip bottles? Yes, these here, I'll put a, a link to this once uh, I'm all done here. Um, but I bought these bottles on Amazon, and they have these nice little fine metal tips on there. And they hold four ounces of dye. And I've had them for over a year, and I haven't had any issues with leaking on them. So I really enjoy these bottles. I do have bigger bottles that I use. These ones I bought from Dharma. But when I'm doing these this finer detail work, it's nice to have this little fine metal tip on there. So I'm using cobalt to start with. I want the the edges and then also in the middle of the tapestry to be uh, dark colors so that the rainbow zigzag pops out. But I don't want it to be just straight black. I want a little bit of patterning there. So I'm putting cobalt on, which is like a navy blue. This is a Dharma color also. See, do you have any suggestions on how to get dye off your hands? Yeah, there is a soap that Dharma sells that removes... I, I've had my hands be almost purple, and it's called uh, Duran, I believe. But you can look up uh, soap on Dharma, and I can... If, let me make a note here so I can add that. But yeah, that is something you just wet your hands a little bit and rub it in. And then I can I can feel a little bit of warmth when that's happening. So there's some sort of a chemical reaction, but it does loosen those dyes up and allow you to wash most of that off. Otherwise, the dyes will wear off in two or three days. But I know some people can't go out in town with dyed hands, which is a reason, definitely a good reason for wearing gloves keep the dyes off your hands, but if you have them on your hands or you've had a whole rip in a glove, the Duran from Dharma is a nice hand washing option. Welcome, Anna. Um, Megan, let's see. I've thickened dyes, get clothes up in bottles like those. Do you use different for the thickened dyes? Um, the thickened dyes. I, I do use, this one here is a bottle from Dharma, um, 
and I think the tip, yeah, the tip is about the same as these here. It's just a matter of when I do my thickened dies, I will test it by rubbing it between my fingers, and it has to be just silky smooth. If there's any kind of lumps in there, then I keep blending on my thickened dies because you need that to just be like smooth as silk. So, because otherwise it will clog, and having a clog in your bottle isn't good because when it breaks loose, then it usually squirts a big glob out, and you don't want that. So, let's see what else we got. Oh, hello, down in Eugene. Let's see. I can't read your name there because there's no vowels. I'd like to buy a vowel, please. Um, yeah, the soap is a great lifesaver. Also, if you happen to get a dye stain on like a kitchen counter or in the bathtub or in your washing machine, if you get one of the Mr. Clean Magic Erasers and get it wet, it will scrub most things up as long as the surface is sealed in some way. So if you get dye on unsealed wood or unsealed concrete uh you're not getting that out i don't think so but if you get like i say there's a dye stain on a counter top or something or your sink then the mr clean magic eraser will get those out and that's something you just get a little bit wet um let's see ever dabble in the paul kenny pariah style yes i've done some paul kenny stuff and had a lot of fun with that. I've kind of spun out one of my own little styles from theirs where I just tie little orbs uh, and make shapes out of that. That's one of the videos that I thought about doing. I did have made a like a yin yang and a peace sign and I made some other images. Um, but I thought about doing a, a video just on the orb itself, not on the, the Paul Kenny style. Uh, someday I might go down to California and do a video with them. They've kind of expressed a little bit of interest in doing a, a joint venture on a video. But during this time frame, they might make their own video. I don't know. But that's something that we'll just work out down the road sometime and see what happens. Okay. Hey, Marty, what's going on? Janelle, hey, I love you too. Looks like you made some baby onesies for your friend's grandbaby. Oh, that is awesome. And I'm glad to be your inspiration. Like I say, that's that's one of my main reasons for doing this channel is to inspire people to create. So, thank you for sharing your story with me. I love inspiring people and I love have, helping people have success. So, you are welcome. Okay, so I got my cobalt on there. Now what I'm going to do is just kind of soak up a little bit of this excess dye before I move on to the next thing. So what I usually will do is I put my thing on a clean, dry towel to soak up a little bit of the excess dye. And especially when I'm going to put another color on. So like over top of the cobalt, I'm going to put some black on that. But if you have too much dye in your tapestry and you try to add more to it, then it tends to run all over the place. So that's why I like to just kind of soak a little bit of that excess dye up before I start adding another layer on there. Okay, so I have some colorful rainbow towels. Okay, let's see what else we have going on here. We're getting close to ending this, so I will have to verify, but 
you guys can correct me if there's been another bid, but so far I think the the high bid for the tapestry that I'm auctioning off, the diamonds, the dragon scale triangles, uh, the high bid is sitting at 95 from Anna. So I'll be closing that out at the end of this video here. So after I add my black, then we'll close that out. I would just want to check, see if there's any more questions. Um, Patricio, I, I don't speak um i don't know if this is portuguese or spanish but i usually use google translate when i'm answering those questions so i can't help you at this time i'll look that up and see if i can put an answer to your question in the description or the comment section here you want i can send pictures oh yes janelle that would be awesome um you can send those to my on my facebook messengers uh, let's see, I think there's a, a link here. Yeah, let me copy this. And so in my launch links here, there's uh, a link to do, send me uh, pictures in my messenger. So you click that up, that'll open another window and just click on the message one and then you can send pictures there. Also, uh, the winner of this tapestry so far, Anna is the high bid. If you click on there and send me a message with your email address, then I can send you an uh, invoice for this tapestry. But I will announce that here in just a couple minutes. Let's see. Uh, somebody asked, what uh, sort of dye setting agent do you use? The With the fiber reactive Procyon dyes, what uh, activates those dyes is the soda ash. So when I'm doing a liquid dye, I will pre-soak my tapestry. And it has to be a cotton or bamboo or hemp. It's got to be a natural fiber. But I will soak that in soda ash. So then when I put my dyes on, then the dyes become active and they immediately start bonding with the cotton fibers. So that's my setting agent. And then I leave my things to batch for a minimum of 24 hours. But I prefer 48 hours because I think it gives the dyes even more time to set up. So between the soda ash activating the dye and then the time frame being when the dyes actually bond, that's how these dyes are set up. <laughs> yes, a clean, dry towel. Yes, uh, as a tie-dye artist, I do quite a bit of laundry. <laughs> so, let's see. It says, your designs were a huge hit with the teacher's end-of-the-year gifts. That's awesome. I'm glad to hear that. I love to be of help and inspiration to people when they create. So I'm glad to be able to do that. I'm glad everybody loved your stuff. Let's see. Hello, Romeo. Or hi. Can you show us your favorite tie-dye clothes, cloth? Um, let's see. My favorite would probably be my um, flower of life tapestry that I did oh and I hadn't shown my t-shirt yet this here is my it's just a rainbow spiral but I did some dyeing for Jeff Glass and he sent me some of his own t-shirts with his logo on there and then he said I could keep one so I dyed it up in rainbow spiral and here it is in the video so anyways but I love my rainbows so I think I'm going to finish this up here and then we'll close out the auction. So if you guys, anybody else wants to outbid Anna at $95, go ahead and get your bid in now. And I will close it in just a couple minutes. I'm just going to put one more coat of black on this cobalt. And then this will be ready to batch for 48 hours. What kind of table is that? 
Uh, this here is just one of those plastic fold-up tables. Um, you can see over here, this here is one of the joints, so it basically folds in half right here. Um, I think I bought them at Costco or something, and the die wipes off of those fairly easily. Um, yeah, when I work on a, a table that I can't wipe the die off of, I've had uh, big uh, wooden tables, and what I do for those is I will cover them with plastic, but I tape the plastic down so it's nice and tight, because that just makes it easier when you're doing your tying and folding, if you're not trying to straighten your plastic out. So if you're going to use plastic, make sure you kind of tape it and stretch it nice and tight, and then you don't have to worry about getting dye on your table. I actually did a tie-dye today that was inspired off your quantum scrunch. Wonderful. I love inspiring people. Also, I love to see you guys' work. So if you tag me, uh, Carl McClellan, or Mr. Tie-Dye over on Facebook, or over on Instagram, you can find me there at Mr. Tie-Dye also. I love seeing people's art that they create. So, okay. So that is our zigzag rainbow DNA. So I'm going to set this aside to batch for 48 hours and then I will do a reveal video and have that up and then of course I'll auction this one off next week. So let me answer any more questions we have here and then we'll close out the bidding. Yes, I, I love tie-dye because you can tie everything up the same way, but e every one of them is going to be just a little bit different. Unless you do couples tees, and then that's the closest. And I do have a video where I tuck one t-shirt inside another, and that's the closest I've ever gotten to having two tie-dyes turn out the same. But even those, there's little minute differences. So, oh, you guys are welcome. I, I, I'm glad you guys joined me here. I guess I didn't check, but right now we have 49 people watching. So, all right, yep, 50 watching. So thank you guys for joining me. I, I love being able to come on here. And since there's a lot of people that are at home during this time, I thought this is the perfect time to get in and do a bunch of live videos. So right now I can say I'm going to do one next Wednesday. And if I slide another one in there someplace, I'll try to put out as much advance notice as I can so you guys can join me. Uh, you're welcome, you're welcome. Let's see, you know people. Uh, tribe Ties, yeah, that sounds familiar. Yeah, I have a bunch of people I follow on Instagram, so that's probably one of them. Yeah, a lot of people, they die on a, a shelf or a rack of some sort. I just, for years, I just have always died on a table. I didn't know about dying on a rack until probably just in the last maybe eight or nine years. But I'm just so used to dying on the table. I do some tapping sometimes when I'm putting my dies on. I kind of tap on the table just to push the dies in further. And when I do it on a rack, then it kind of pokes through the rack. So I've just stayed on a table. And if I have too much dye slopping around, which right now I don't, then that's when I use these clean, dry rags. And I'll put them underneath just to make sure I don't have puddling going on. So, okay. Looks like we're about done here. How do you dry the t-shirts? Uh, the t-shirts after I finish dyeing them they need to set up uh, let the dye set up so I put them in a tub like this let me grab it here so I have a, a rack in here that I got from the uh, closet department at Home Depot and then I just cut them to the length that I wanted it has a lip on one side and flat on the other side. So in order to level it up, I just cut some, I think, three-quarter inch PVC pipe. I lay a couple chunks in there. And then you just set your rack in there. And then you, sometimes if I'm doing t-shirts, I can fit four or five of them in here, depending on how they're tied up. And then there's a lid that fits on this. So 
then you can pick it up and pack it around. If it's sunny outside, I'll put this out in the sun with the lid on it. Uh, if it's cold in the winter time, then I'll stack these next to a heater vent. So that's how I do my batching. And I also have a little video that explains that, but I guess we just did it live here. You are the Bob Ross of tie-dye. I love what you do. Thanks for spreading your knowledge. You're welcome. And yes, I kind of resonate. I love watching Bob Ross, the happy little cloud here. And uh, Where in Home Depot? It was in the closet department. Uh, there was over in the, where the lighting fixtures are, but the, the racks, they came in like, I think, 8 and 10 foot lengths, or 6, 8, and 10. Uh, so anyways, I just bought couple of probably the big 10 foot lengths and then just chopped them up I measured my tubs here and chopped them up to fit in there just perfect so okay so I think I'm gonna close this out I I didn't see any other bids come in for the tapestry let me scroll back just a little bit yeah, I don't see any others so Anna is uh, the winner of this tapestry here make sure this is out so this here is the dragon scale diamond tapestry so and what I usually do unless you don't want me to is I usually sign my name down the bottom corner here so Anna uh, if you want me to not sign it let me know but otherwise I will sign this and I'll get an invoice out to you so, as soon as you send me your email address. And then like I say, I'll when I open this one up, I'll do a reveal video for that and I'll post that probably in two or three days. So thank you guys and peace out. Namaste, I love you all. Oh, wait a minute, let's see. Can you share with us the web where you buy the dyes? Yeah, that's I bought those my dyes from Dharma. So if you just look up dharmatrading.com. But yes, when I'm done here, I will put a link to Dharma in the description of this video. And Oh yes, please sign it. Okay, I will do that. And thanks once again, Anna, for your support, being a member, and for bidding on these tapestries. And thank you all for coming and hanging out for the afternoon with me. And I'll try to get back in and do another one of these soon. Peace. I love you guys.